Hey, friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. It's been a couple of weeks. I do apologize. I had a number of things going on and just my time management skills kind of got the best of me. But to make it up to you, each day this week, Monday to Friday, I'm going to be posting a new video just to make up for that lost time on the channel and website. Today, I want to cover a question that comes up a lot, and that is, what is the best way to collaborate on a song together using Logic Pro 10? This is in the context, in my mind, that we're both working remotely. Maybe you and I don't live in the same city or the same state, or maybe we do. Maybe we live down the street from one another, but maybe we're not going to get into a room together for quite some time, just given the current circumstances. So how do we effectively and efficiently work on a song together, but separate? And the answer really depends. What it boils down to is what software are you and I both using for recording, mixing, producing? So in my mind, there's three different scenarios. Number one, both of us are using Logic Pro 10. Number two, one of us is using Logic Pro 10, but the other is using GarageBand for iOS. Or number three, one of us is using Logic, while the other is using a completely different piece of software, such as Pro Tools, Studio One. And I would even put GarageBand for the Mac in this category, just because though you can open GarageBand projects in Logic, you can't do the opposite. You can't open a Logic project in GarageBand. I do hope this changes in the future. I hope there's a little more compatibility between the two, but these are the three buckets we're working with. So I'm going to explore each scenario, offer you some options, but also bring your attention to some other services that might be helpful for collaborating remotely. And also when you're first saving your project, I would make sure to go to file and save as and make sure to save all of these assets. Make sure to copy the following files into your projects and just save everything that's relevant. So definitely audio files for sure. And I would save really all of this just to be safe. This will include alchemy samples, sampler samples, Apple content like Apple Loops. And this will make it easier for everyone, even if we're both using Logic Pro 10. And you can organize your project any which way you like, package or folder. Cool. So number one, Logic to Logic user. This is probably the easiest scenario because we're both using the same software for recording and producing. What we just need to decide is what service do we want to use for sharing our projects? What probably makes a lot of sense is since we're both Mac users, obviously, we should use iCloud Drive for collaborating. Every Mac user gets a little bit of space on iCloud. And honestly, it's very cheap to expand your iCloud Drive space if it's not enough. I mean, I pay three bucks a month for 200 gigs. Not bad. And you should have an iCloud Drive folder right in the left-hand side of your finder. If we click on this, we can save right to this and then share the file with our collaborator. To do that, I'm gonna to navigate to the project that I wanna share, and we're gonna right click on the project file and go down to share. And we have a couple different options. We can share via mail or messages or airdrop. I'm just gonna add people. And from here, I'm gonna click on copy link. And you have a couple different options for sharing, who can access, permissions. You can either only people you invite or anyone with a link and then set the permission to either can make changes or view only. And once you have this all set up, I wouldn't actually add anybody quite yet. So I'm going to pick anyone with a link. This opens up some sharing capabilities. And now we can right click again, go down to share, go down to show people. And now under share options, we can now copy the link. So check this out. We'll go to Firefox, open a new tab, and now we can send this file to our collaborator and they can add it to their iCloud Drive or download a copy. Very helpful. Now I do wanna point out with folders and it could be any folder in your iCloud Drive. Let's do the same thing. Go to share, add people. And we're just gonna copy a link. Anyone with a link, share. Okay, and then we copy the link, click done. And when we try to share the folder, the only option available is to add to iCloud Drive. Unfortunately, you cannot share a folder to download. What is required is that we compress the file into a zip file and then share that. So you go down to compress and then it will create a compressed file. And from here, we can go down to share and add people and go through the whole process again. So I'll try to make this quick. Cool, now that project folder has been compressed and now can be saved to either iCloud Drive or just downloaded as is. Of course, you don't have to use iCloud Drive if you don't want to. 
There are plenty of different options, of course. You could use Google Drive, which many people use because you get quite a bit of space for absolutely free. Dropbox, which I've used for many years. But I want to bring your attention to an option from Splice. And Splice is a tool that many folks who work in hip hop and electronic are producers use for grabbing samples and one shots and loops. It's a huge library for different inspiring sounds. But there's one section of Splice that many people don't talk about, and that's Splice Studio, which is a free file syncing and sharing service, completely free, no cap on how much you can upload, and it even saves multiple versions. All you have to do is download the app to load your projects. And if we go down here, you can see you can go back to any version. You can see here I have Splice in my taskbar. And when I click on it, the app pops open and we can paw through my different projects, dig into samples if I had a paid subscription, presets, tools. But what we want to be most concerned with is that Splice creates a folder for you to save your projects to. And from here, you can just drag and drop or save your projects in this folder. And when you quit the project, Splice immediately uploads it to its service for you to share with your collaborator. It's pretty cool. And if we go to the web browser here, we can see this project is called Spooky and there's two versions and we can even open it right from the web browser into Logic. We can save stems for our collaborator if they're not using Logic so they can download them or we can save a bounce of our project to upload and share. And we can add collaborators by going to the app, going to our project, there's the three dots here and you can add a collaborator and then you just type in the username of the person you want to share it with. The only stipulation is that the other user has to have a splice account as well. But again, it's free, no cap or limit on how much you can upload and it even saves different versions so you can backtrack in case something got messed up along the way. The only caveats when it comes to splice is number one, splice can only work with logic packages. So projects saved as packages, not folders. So if we go to logic, go up to file, and go to save as, you wanna make sure to organize your project as a package and make sure to save all this stuff as well. The other thing is, is that you can't save project alternatives in Logic because this will break or mess up the different versioning process within Splice. So if we go up to file, go to project alternatives, you cannot save different alternatives for your own benefit so you can flip through the different alternatives. And that's kind of a bummer, but again, this breaks the versioning process in Splice, so just keep that in mind. Cool, now the two other categories, Logic to GarageBand iOS user and Logic to other DAW user, let's work on GarageBand iOS. The process is very simple. You just need iCloud and then we go to file, go down to share project to GarageBand for iOS. This can be great for those who are working on an iPad or an iPhone, or if you just wanna share the project with yourself so you can bring it on the road with you, take it to a coffee shop, wherever the case may be. Now, I've done this many times before, so I'm just going to make sure to share it again, even though this was previously shared. And this is going to save to a dedicated GarageBand for iOS folder in iCloud. We're going to save this as spooky and save it. Logic is going to essentially bounce the project in place. It's going to take a minute, so I'm just going to speed up the video so we can get right to it. Cool. If we take a look in iCloud, so if we go to my iCloud drive, go down to GarageBand, we can see spooky band has been saved. So this is a file specific to GarageBand for iOS. You cannot open it in GarageBand on your Mac or in Logic, but I'll show you that it's not gonna be a big deal. Let's now quit out of Logic. So we won't even save. And now I'm gonna show you on my iPad here, we have GarageBand, we have Spooky right in the list of projects. I'm gonna click on it to download it and then open it. We can see now that this project has been saved as a stereo file for us to listen to. Check it out. Awesome. So now we're just gonna add a drummer track, just something simple, just to demonstrate that we did something. So add electronic drummer. Okay, we've added this. Go to the main page here. We can see that this has been populated with drummer. I'm gonna save the project by clicking on the piece of paper in the left-hand corner. Cool, it's saving. Let's go back to the Mac and go to Spooky right down here. Open the Logic project and watch this. And now we're met with a dialogue that some new tracks have been added to this project by GarageBand iOS. Do we wanna import them? Let's do it. So we import and just like that, the import was successful. 
That means if we do any sort of recording or producing or writing on iOS, it will be saved to the Logic Project. You don't have to go through a whole process of reopening or resaving or, you know, just it syncs. It's awesome. Okay, that leaves us with the last category of Logic to other DAW users, including GarageBand. And in this case, I would say just loop your project, go to file, go down to bounce and bounce this project or section. Here's the deal. For anyone not using Logic or GarageBand for iOS, it's really just gonna be a chore to send a ton of files back and forth. Instead, I recommend that you just send a stereo file. So we'll just save this into iCloud here. So we'll just call this uh, Spooky2. And then you can send a stereo file for that other person to write to, and then they can just send a stereo file back to you. And this will make the process at least relatively pain-free. Otherwise, you're having to send each other tons of stems back and forth, and that's just gonna be a pain. If you write to a single stereo file back and forth, at some point, you'll decide, okay, we're good with this project. One of us is gonna mix, or we're gonna send the files to be mixed. And then you can export all of the stems to share with that one person who's going to be mixing the project. So of all these options, I think Splice is probably the best option. Again, because it's free, there's no upload limits, and it also saves different versions, and you can upload stems and bounces. And I would recommend an in-house solution within Logic if there was one. Hopefully that will change in the near future. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whyLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll check you tomorrow in the next video.